In this video, I'll look at a vintage analog volt ohm milliammeter, the Northern Electric NS14510-L1. A volt ohm milliammeter, or VOM, as the name implies, is capable of measuring voltage, resistance or ohms, and current, amps or milliamps, in different ranges. Sometimes called a multimeter, historically they used analog meters. They typically contain no active components, just the meter movement, switches, and resistors. A power source, usually one or more batteries, are required for the ohms function. Units that can measure AC have rectifiers of some kind, and sometimes the meters include capacitors and fuses. Probably the most popular and well-known volt ohm milliammeter was the Simpson Model 260, which was offered in various forms since the 1940s and is still being manufactured today. Today, VOMs have largely been replaced by digital multimeters, which are more accurate and lower in cost, but an analog meter can be useful for making measurements such as adjusting a circuit for a peak or null, which is hard to see on a digital display. For this reason, some digital multimeters provide an analog bar graph display. This unit was made by Northern Electric. Northern Electric started as the Canadian division of the Bell Telephone Company that produced telephones and telephone equipment. It later expanded into other markets, including radio manufacturing, and became independent of the U.S. parent company. In the late 70s, the company name was changed to Northern Telecom and later Nortel Networks, reflecting the switch from telephone to telecommunications and networking. After the internet bubble burst, a recession, and a series of accounting scandals, the company declared bankruptcy. From what I can determine, the model NS14510-L1 is a Canadian version of the Bell Labs KS14510-L1 meter. The unit was made to Bell Telephone specifications by various vendors and was a modified version of the Simpson Model 260, Weston 671, or Triplet Model 60. Based on its appearance, I believe my unit was made by Simpson. It would have been used by technicians or engineers in one of the Northern Electric labs or possibly in the field. The unit is in a large Bakelite case about 5.5 by 7 inches by 3.5 inches deep. It has a single set of inputs marked plus and minus. The meter movement has the standard zero adjust control. There's a single function switch which selects among the following ranges. DC voltage ranges to 0.3, 3, 12, 16, 300, and 600 volts. AC voltage ranges to 3, 12, 60, 300, and 600 volts. DC current to 0 0.06, 1.2, 12, and 120 milliamps. And ohms times 1, times 10, times 100, times 1,000, and times 10,000. The 0 0.3 volt and 0 0.06 milliamp ranges use the same switch setting. The meter is 4 inches wide and is a 50 microamp movement, giving the unit a sensitivity of 20,000 ohms per volt on DC. The AC sensitivity is 3,000 ohms per volt. The meter has a green scale for ohms and three black scales for AC and DC voltages and current. There's a separate scale for the 0 to 3 volts AC range that's slightly different due to the non-linearity of the rectifiers in the circuit at low voltages. There's a fuse in the unit to provide some protection. A spare fuse is also stored inside. The heavy Bakelite case would have also provided some protection to the user against fire or explosion in case of an extreme overload. Basic accuracy is 2% of full scale on DC and 5% on AC. The leather carrying strap is removable. There are two more holes for nuts at the bottom, presumably for attaching a carrying case. On the back is an indentation marked adapter lock. Simpson sold add-on adapters for measuring temperature, AC current, and testing transistors and so on. This indentation was used for attaching one of these units. Inside you can see the range switch and most of the precision resistors used for range switching. More components are present under the range switch. 
A small circuit board with the solid state rectifier diodes is behind this panel, presumably for safety reasons. On most ranges, the unit is powered by a single 1.5 volt D cell. The highest ohms range used a 30 volt Everetti type 413 battery that's now obsolete. A common solution for the 30 volt battery was to use three modern 9 volt batteries in series. This unit was modified to add three 9 volt battery clips and has a sticker inside that says use three 9 volt instead of 30 volt. The foam was added to hold the smaller batteries more securely. Let's take a look at the meter in operation. These units are not auto ranging and can be damaged if the input voltage or current exceeds the selected range. If in doubt about the voltage being measured, standard practice is to start at the highest range and work down. For accuracy, you want to get a reading in the upper third of the meter scale if possible. Here we're measuring a voltage of about 12 volts DC. And here I'm measuring the 120 volt AC line voltage on the 300 volt range. There's actually no range that's well suited to accurately measuring 120 volts, but this unit was intended for the telephone industry rather than consumer electronics. In order to measure resistance, you need to short the leads together and adjust the ohms adjust thumb wheel for a reading of zero ohms on the meter or full scale. This needs to be adjusted when you change ohms ranges. Here I'm measuring the value of a 1000 ohm resistor on the times 100 range. The highest ohm range uses the 30 volt or 3 9 volt batteries. On the times 10,000 ohms range, I can easily measure the resistance between my hands, somewhere around 50,000 ohms. This unit was bought on eBay in June 2013 from a Canadian seller. It was working and came with a set of test probes that appear to be original. I found a manual for the US version of the meter on the internet. As you saw, it's been modified to allow using three 9-volt batteries in place of the obsolete 30-volt battery. Some cracks at the bottom of the case have been repaired with epoxy. The front panel has been engraved with NI2631, probably some kind of inventory number. As to age, it's hard to say. It's in good condition, but could have been made anywhere from the 1960s through 1970s. An analog VOM is an attractive piece of equipment, and units like this have been used for decades. An analog meter is still useful for making certain types of measurements. A VOM draws power from the circuit under test and can sometimes load down the circuit, but the voltages listed on radio circuit diagrams were often listed based on using a 20,000 ohms per volt meter like this one and took this into account. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other YouTube videos on vintage amateur radio and test equipment. If you're interested in test equipment, you may enjoy my book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment. It focuses on Heathkit's line of test equipment, including meters, power supplies, oscilloscopes, and signal generators. It's available from Amazon and Lulu.com.